Live and it looks like we are now live. All right, awesome. Well, um, we're we're finally live. So thanks. Uh, sorry for the uh, couple minute delay there. But uh, before we get started, I just want to you know thank everyone who's been joining us today, who has been with us, uh, you know, from whenever we kind of opened our doors, so to speak. You guys should be super proud. You totally crashed our chat. Uh, yeah, thousands <laughs> of <laughs> yeah, thousands of chats were initiated by all of you guys, and it crashed uh, the servers. So, uh, but things should be up and running smoothly again, and you should be able to submit questions uh, once again if you're following along with us. Uh, so, I'll be kind of watching the the chat box to see if questions come in, but. Um, Welcome to the session here. Uh, it, it's, you know, make your resume and cover letter stand out from the competition. And when we were building this uh, schedule out, our show, our show schedule, uh, we knew it would be important to have a session dedicated to this. And uh, yeah. we thought that there would be no one better to talk about it uh, than Dr. Nishan Presley. So for those yeah. of you who don't do, know Dr. Nish, she uh, practices at uh, Florida Eye Clinic in Orlando, Florida, and runs an Instagram channel called Eyes on Niche that is packed uh, with really great, helpful content geared towards helping young ODs, optometry students, and pre-optometry students with navigating careers and mentorship and a whole lot more. So uh, people came to hear you talk, uh, Nishan. So I'm going to let you take the floor. And um, I know you've kind of prepared a, a bit of a a presentation here, so I'm going to let you kind of take over. I'll sit back and watch for any questions that come in. And um, before you get started, I have a, a special code here for those of you who are watching and following along and entering the raffle. And uh, Nishan, you should do the same. So the Ooh. special code for today or for this session is refractive surgery. So make sure okay. you write that out, all caps, one word, and use that to gain additional entries into the raffle. So without further ado, take it away. Thank you so much, Antonio. So welcome guys to this amazing workshop. First of all, I wanna thank Covalent Careers Optometry for putting this together, this whole virtual career fair and providing so many people with so much information is amazing, especially in the times that we're in. So I'm so excited to be a part of this. So thank you so much. All right, so I wanna get straight into it. Um, I did create a little uh, slideshow to help you guys, and I want you, to guys, you guys to follow along. So I'm gonna share my screen, just give me one second. All right. So I do want to welcome you guys to the resume and cover letter workshop where we're really gonna dig deep into how to make it stand out from the rest of the competition. So what we're gonna be talking about today is just really a resume overview and what are some of those must have sections you should have in your resume. And I'm also gonna provide you guys with some real examples that I've used um, and what I've and how I've helped other people craft their resumes as well. Um, we're gonna be going over a cover letter. What is it? Why do you need it? and what should you really put in there? And then we're also gonna talk about some tips that I want to give you guys to make it stand out. And then we'll have a little session at the end if you guys have any questions. So first I wanna talk a little bit about myself. So hi, I'm Dr. Nish, just like Antonio said earlier, I'm a 26 year old eye doctor, mentor and entrepreneur who loves to help others meet their goals. And that's why I'm here today. I'm here to help you meet your goals. Um, I graduated from the Pennsylvania College of Optometry, their scholars program, where I received my doctorate degree in only three years. And now, just like Antonio said, I'm currently practicing in Orlando, Florida at an MDOD group private practice. So creating a standout resume slash cover letter can be really, really tricky. And that's why we're here today, just to help you um, more or less uh, travel the waters or the rough waters that may come about when you're trying to find that perfect job for you. So let me know if any of you guys can relate to this. If you're kind of confused about, okay, where, where do I start? And I swear some of these emojis and make these faces every single day. Um, you also wanna think about what's the proper format that you should write it in. 
and what should you focus on? So those are some of the things that we're gonna be digging into. So let's jump straight in. So just a quick resume overview and some things you should know. So first disclaimer, if you don't know where to start or don't have an old resume or um, even anything that you can start from, um, Covalent Careers actually just put out an amazing template that I think you guys should go download. I took a, I took a look and I thought it was a great document um, that makes it a lot easier to create your own resume. Now a resume is typically um, a one to two page document um, and you want the employer to be able to look at it and pick out the important things with minimal effort. That's the biggest thing with minimal effort. Um, sometimes they kind of glance at the resume maybe for a few seconds. Um, of course, most likely with clinical um, jobs, they might take more than a few seconds to glance at it, but they just really want to pick out the biggest things. And you don't want it to be more than two pages. When it gets to more than two pages, that's when it's a little bit too bulky and you don't want it to be that long. You also want your resume to be organized and you want it to be easily followed. So bullet points are always going to be your best friend, keeping it nice and concise. Bold lettering, showing and or uh, more or less having that employer look at the things that are most important and that's what we like to bold. And underlining is a good thing you can do as well. And don't forget um, italics. And you really want an easy to read font. Um, I always recommend either Times New Roman or um, Arial. Um, you want proper spacing. And I always say you want to keep your info in chronological order. You don't want things to jump all around because that's where things get confusing. So those must have sections. So first, contact information. This is a, a kind of a given. You want your name at the top. You want your correct address, correct mailing address. You want a proper phone number. Some people may not want their phone number on there, but I did put my phone number on mine. It's just easy for them to access and call me if they have any questions. Um, and a proper email address. And I must also add a professional email address. Okay, so we'll go into that a little bit more. You want to definitely have your education on there. That's really important. You want to talk about your clinical or professional experience and sometimes work experience. And I kind of separated those because either you can have clinical experience some people have work experience, some people just call those two professional experience, but that's something that's definitely up to you in terms of what you wanna call your experience. Some optional sections, career summary and objective. You may have seen some resumes where at the top, they kind of write out what their career goals are. And that's something that is optional, but that is something that I put on my resume. And I think that kind of made mine stand out from the rest. Some key abilities, do you know any other languages? Do you have any amazing computer skills that might um, help the practice? And do you have any extra certifications like CPR? That's something that you could possibly add to your resume as well. Your professional affiliations, what clubs, organizations, or positions have you held? And also any honors or awards. So this is a sample resume um, of someone that I helped create their resume when they were applying for residencies. So as you can see at the very top, their name, which of course is Jane Doe, their name is nice and bold and it's large. So they know exactly who the candidate is and um, who, who they're talking about or who they're reading about, I should say. I want us to pay attention to the next section down. Here we have the address, we have the phone number, and we have a professional email address. So the email is not kitty123 at yahoo.com. You really want your email address to be as professional as possible. Always recommend a first name, last name at something.com um, or possibly your school address if you're still at school, but definitely a professional address is something that I always recommend. Now for, so, so for those optometry school students who are graduating May 2020, um, it's always good to put in their doctor of optometry candidate expect the graduation May 2020, just so they know even though they should know, um, that's just something that um, I always recommend adding in there. And I have had some students say or ask, should I put in here my, um, the fact that I passed part one and two, or if I passed all three part of boards? And you can definitely do that. Um, on my own resume, I did put that I passed all three part of boards um, in this section here. So don't be afraid to add that. 
And then under that, you can see that this, uh, this person also took some advanced studies courses. So that's something else that you can add if you are taking any advanced studies courses that could make you stand out, definitely put that at the top. And if we look down here, I really want us to pay attention to the areas that are bold and then the areas that are italicized. So when it comes to what's important, like I said, we're gonna use bold lettering, we're gonna use italics, so we're gonna use um, some underlines. So here, extern is first because that was the most recent professional experience that she had. She was an extern at the Mulqueeny Eye Center. And it's really important when you're listing your professional experience and the locations of those experiences to put everything there. What was your position? Where was it located? What's the full name of the practice that you were at? What's the, um, what's the area of the practice you were at, state and city? And I also want you guys to pay attention to the fact that she lists the, the dates of when she was there. And it's italicized. Now it doesn't have to be italicized. This is just the way that she wanted to format her resume. And you can see that it's consistent with the next um, experience under that, which is really, really important. So the, the things that you definitely need is what your position was, where it was, what the name of the practice was, where it was located and when you were there. So there are definitely things you should pay attention to and make sure that you have. And I also wanna pay attention to the fact uh, that under she was able to talk about what she did there. And you can see that there are bullet points. I always recommend bullet points. I don't really like run on sentences or paragraphs. I try to stay away from that because it gets really jumbled. And next thing you know, good things get lost in, bet um, in between the sentences. So, providing post-operative care for crack cataract and refractive surgery patients. Providing, ing means still doing it. As you can see, it's November 2018 to present when she did send this out. So well, the way that she formatted her verb was as if she's still doing it. But if you look at the one under where, where she was at the Naval Hospital in Japan, you see that everything is past tense, provided primary eye care services provided direct care and co-management for a variety of ocular disease conditions. That's really important as well. You can't put providing because you're no longer doing it. So this is just a prime example to really pay attention to the fact, um, to your verbs and how they're ending. And if you're still doing it or if you're no longer doing it, knowing if it's present tense or knowing if it's past tense. So those are some things that you should definitely look at. Now the next section of the optional um, areas that she decided that she wanted to add to her resume were the key skills and abilities. So for example, um, she wanted to add that what computer programs she was good at. And this is really, really a really good thing to highlight, especially if you're looking into working at certain private practices or going into a new practice. They wanna know how long they're gonna have to uh, or how long it's going to take for you to more or less catch up to the, the EMR program that you use or that that practice uses. Um, everyone knows that's the longest time when it comes or that takes the longest when you're onboarding and going into a new practice is really learning the system and learning where everything goes. So it's good if you already know the system and it's something that employers actually look at. So for her EMR, she knew about exam writer, next gen CompuLink office made all those good things. She also wanted to highlight the equipment that she was really, um, that she knows how to use. So she was able to talk about the Zyphere's OCT, the Humphrey Visual Field, um, the HRT, things like that. She also talked about she was CPR certified. So again, this is an optional area. You don't have to add it, but it is something I recommend because you really want to stand out and let that employer know, hey, this is what I'm good at. This is what, um, th these are some skills I can bring, bring to your practice. And also, if you do have exam writer in your practice, I already know how to use it. So that takes less time away from me seeing patients um, and allows me to see more patients because you're not having to train me for a longer period of time. And then I also just wanted to give an example of what a career summary or 
professional goals may possibly be. Um, now, talking about this earlier, this is something that's all also optional, meaning for some people, they put it at the very top of their resume, right under their name, what their career summary is. So the first example, I decided to write one for an optometry student. This looks very similar to the one that um, I wrote, but I just changed a few words and of course changed the date um, in terms of what I was looking for when it came to looking for a job. So in my career summary, I wrote, hardworking optometry student on track to graduate in May 2020, motivated and eager to provide great health care, extensive training in pediatrics and binocular vision, looking for a full-time practice where I can excel as an optometrist while exemplifying my strong leadership management and personal skills. So basically in the career summary, you really just want to talk about who you are, what do you bring to the practice, what are you looking for? And by doing that, again, that just gives the employer a nice area to just kind of glance at, okay, before I have to read through this full resume, what am I working with? And that lets them know how interested they should be in really digging into the other parts of your resume. Well, there's some awesome things to, um, that's something that I always recommend adding, but like I said, not everyone likes to add a career summary at the top. And same thing, I wrote one for someone who may be looking for, maybe an already board certified optometrist, not a new grad, um, disciplined and motivated boards, uh, certified optometrists, uh, motivated and eager to provide great health care, extensive training and specialty contacts and ocular disease, looking for a full-time practice. So kind of same thing, who you are, uh, what do you bring to the practice, and what are you looking for? So just some options or some, some examples, I should say, of what you can uh, add to a career summary or professional summary at the top of your resume. So let's go through a few tips. So um, I always recommend that you structure your resume to the type of practice you are applying to. And I want to let you guys know, it's okay to have many versions of the same resume. So for example, if you see an ad for looking for a full-time optometrist with experience in specialty contact lens fitting, it's really important that you highlight the type of contact lenses you're comfortable with fitting, and how many successful fits you have completed. So that's something that you would add into either your career summary, or if you do have any experience with contact lenses at a specific practice, that's where you would um, talk about um, the type of contact lenses you fit and how many successful fits you've had. Another option or another example, Say the ad says, you know, we're looking for a full-time optometrist with a strong medical background. And that's the type of ads that I was looking for when I was applying for jobs. And I recommend that you highlight that you managed and treated specific ocular disorders such as glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, allergic conjunctivitis, and the list can go on and on. But again, make sure that you're highlighting that you've dealt with these things in the past you know how to manage them and you know how to treat them. Because again, if this is what the position is looking for, it's, it's smart for you to highlight that in your resume so they know that you are the best candidate for this position. All right, and then there's a few questions that I always get about the resume. So first question I always get is, should I list my GPA? And that's a really good question. And that's something I would say is optional, it's not a must have. So you don't have to list your GPA. Um, looking back at my resume, I did not list my GPA. Um, it's not that I didn't have a good GPA because I graduated with a 3.4, but it's just not something that I added. I thought the fact that I put on there that I passed all parts of boards was more important than my GPA. And to be honest, once you do graduate and you're looking for a job, I haven't had any interviewer or any employer ever ask me what your GPA was. They all just asked if I passed boards and the answer was always yes. Another question I asked about the resume um, or what question I get about resumes is should I add my high school? So I decided not to add my high school um, to my uh, resume in terms of under education. For one, I wasn't applying locally. So I'm from Pennsylvania, but I chose to apply in Florida, Orlando, Florida. Um, so even if I did put my high school on there, they wouldn't know 
where it was or you know anything about that. Sometimes it can be a bonding moment between you and the interviewer, maybe if they went there or if they have family that goes there, but I didn't think it was needed. And also I needed space. So if you need space to really keep it to two pages, I would say leave it off. But if you have some extra space and you wanna add some fluff to not make it look so short, if your resume is short, um, you, I, I would say you can go ahead and add it. And then let's talk about work versus clinical versus professional experience. And I kind of talked about this earlier. What's the difference between them? Now, on my resume, I just had um, a heading that just said professional experience. And in that professional experience, I listed my clinical experience as well as my work experience. So all of my clinical experience was at the top and then my work experience came after. So if you're like me and you worked a worthy job while in school, or before, I recommend listing your job. Now, when I say that, um, when I was in school, I had two jobs. Um, I worked at VisionWorks, and I also worked at a private ophthalmologist office. And I decided to keep um, those things on there because it really spoke to my work ethic, and it also spoke to the fact that I was already working in the industry in some way. Um, and it was also smart to keep the ophthalmologist office on there because I was applying to MDOD practices. And if they know I already work with an ophthalmologist, like, oh, this is great. She already has experience working in an MDOD practice. So this is going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be an easy transition for her. All right. So now let's move into the cover letter and what a cover letter is. So a cover letter, I always say, is shorter and it's sweeter. Um, it's a one-page document that is sent with your resume to help introduce yourself and provide more information on why you are qualified for the job you're applying for. And when I say a one-page document, I mean a letter. Just like it says a cover letter, we're literally writing a letter. And employers use this to screen applications for available jobs to determine which candidates they want to interview. So it's really important to have a good cover letter because this is something that they look at before they even get to your resume. So it's really important to have one that stands out. So must have sections. A cover letter is gonna have a beginning, a middle and an end. And if this does sound familiar, it does. It's like we're writing a story. It's gonna have a beginning, a middle and an end in that letter. So let's start off with the beginning. So the cover letter, with the beginning, you're going to introduce yourself and tell them why you're writing. So here's an example that I wrote a little bit earlier today. So first, I still keep my name up here. Um, I still keep my address, my phone number, and my, um, and my email address. And of course, the doctor's name is not Dr. Who, but oops, let me go back. There we go. Um, you want to make sure that you're actually um, writing to someone. So if you know who the cover letter or who the resume is going to, albeit possibly the hiring manager, human resources, if it's the specific doctor of the practice who does the hiring, whoever it is, try to get a name because that makes it seem more personalized. And it also um, just makes it look more professional when we compare it to, uh, to, who it may, to whom it may concern. Now you can definitely put that, but like I said, it's just not as personal. Um, and it's great if you can figure out who the letter is going to. So dear Dr. Who, I'm excited to write in response to your ad seeking a full-time optometrist at Florida Eye Clinic. So my name is at the top already and I stated why I'm writing. And then I also say, my great attention to detail, excellent clinical skill abilities, and amazing chair side demeanor aligns well with the qualifications you are seeking at your renowned practice. I am certain I am the ideal candidate for this position. Now, when it comes to that first paragraph, it's really important that you brag about yourself. This is the time for you to really show your personality and let them know what you, what you can bring to the practice. Why should I keep reading your cover letter? Why should I go and look at your resume after this? This is where you brag about yourself and you talk about what, the, what you can do for the practice or what you can bring to the practice. And 
when I write my cover letters, I use words that were that are in the ad or in the ad that the um, in the optometry ad or the optometrist position ad, I should say. So in their ad, if they say we're looking for an optometrist with great attention to detail, I'm going to add that because I have great attention to detail and I'm exactly who you're looking for. If it says that they're looking for someone with great clinical skill abilities, I'm going to add that too. Now, of course, don't take it word for word because, you know, it might seem like you're just copy and pasting, but really make it your own and don't be afraid to take one or two words out of the ad that they put out to add to your own cover letter to let them know, again, I'm the person that you're looking for. Now, the middle. Now, this area is where you provide brief details about yourself and why you are interested in the opportunity at the specific location. Example here. So I wrote when I was applying for positions, my educational background at the Pennsylvania College of Optometry at Salish University has provided me with a solid foundation within areas of anterior and posterior segment disease, specialty contact lens fitting, and pre and post operative care. Moreover, my leadership abilities have afforded me a well rounded skill set, including first rate interpersonal and communication skills. I am eager to contribute my enthusiasm and skills to Florida Eye Clinic staff. I would deeply appreciate the opportunity to work alongside the other talented clinicians at your practice. So there we go. I provided brief details about myself. Where did I go to school? I went to PCO. Why am I interested in the opportunity? Well, because um, looking here, uh, that position was specifically looking for a, a, a medical background optometrist. Well, I have a medical background. I have anterior and posterior segment disease um, background. I know how to fit specialty contact lenses. I'm really good with pre and post-op care. So this is why I'm interested in it because I have everything that we need to, I have everything that you're looking for to fill the position. And then the end is where you wanna thank the recipient or the employer for the opportunity to apply and for reviewing your cover letter. And you also want to end the letter with a statement saying that you look forward to hearing from them soon. And that's really important. You really wanna end it with, I look forward to hearing from you soon. So please review my attached resume for a greater understanding of my optometric training, expertise and careerments. I look forward to hearing from you soon. And then that's the end of the letter. But with that, you still see, you know, please review my attached resume because like I said, they're going to read your cover letter before they go on and read your resume. At least most people do. I can't speak for everyone. And you also want to say, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Some people say, you know, please feel free to um, give me a call. Other people say I will be sending a follow-up email um, requesting an appointment or things like that. I never really said that. I didn't want to be too forward. But um, I just kind of ended it with, I look forward to hearing from you soon. All right, so some takeaways I want us to talk about is um, match your resume and cover letter to the position. So like I kind of talked about earlier, it's okay to have many versions of your resume and your cover letter. As you can see in the cover letter, I specifically named who it was going to. I specifically named the practice I was applying to. I made sure I name dropped in that paragraph. And what I would do is I would just keep the same one and just take the name out, switch the practice name and switch the name who it's going to. Um, and I will also change a few words around depending on what type of um, optometrist they're looking for. Um, if you don't know where to start, use a template. We talked about that earlier. Um, and a professional tone and air-free content are a must. So it's really important that you proofread, proofread, proofread. Um, no one wants to see grammatical errors. No one wants to see punctuational errors. So get a mentor to look over it for you. Because sometimes we look at a document for so long, we don't even see the mistake. Even though it's blatantly right in front of us, we don't see the formatting error. We don't see the spacing error, things like that. So it's really important to have an extra set of eyes look at it. And I had a few people look at mine, like three people take a look and let me know if this is good and ready to be sent out. 
All right, so that kind of wraps up the presentation. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please let me know. But I did also want to add my contact information um, in here. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at askdrnisha at gmail.com. And then on my Instagram, eyes on niche, kind of what Antonio talked about earlier, um, is where I really like to interact with all of my followers. So please follow me on Instagram and also my LinkedIn page, um, just me, Sean Presley. You can find me on there as well. Well, thanks for um, presenting that, uh, Nishan. Is super helpful. Uh, you know, no matter where you are in your career, I think you can definitely take a lot away from that. And having a resume, uh, you know, no matter where you are in your career, whether you're just getting started or maybe you have a great job and you have no plans on, on changing jobs, you should still have a resume. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, Always keep sure. it updated. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the last like two minutes we've got, I just wanted to. There was a couple of questions that just came in some of them you actually awesome. even answered just on the fly oh, anyway good. but um the uh questions that stick out here were do you have any quick tips on how you can tweak a resume to become a cv so say you've like created just a mm -hmm. CV, uh, resume mm -hmm. and you're like need a cv is there anything you can kind of do just to quickly sort of uh transform yeah. it you know i had some extra sections talking about a cv but i know that we weren't going there today but um, quick transformation, um, well, for one, kind of keep the whole thing at the, at the top. I still keep the name. I still keep the career summary. I also still keep the education. I still keep the professional experience. But the only difference between a CV or curriculum vitae and the resume is it's just an area where you can really brag about yourself and put everything that you've done in your entire career. Now for myself, when I was coming out of optometry school, I made sure I put everything in um, from high school and on if it was important. Um, but um, yeah, just like I said, keep a lot of the stuff from the resume, but just don't be afraid to add a few more things. Um, honors and awards is really important too. So make sure you have all of that. Awesome. And uh, another question popped up and you kind of answered these along the way too, but if you want to just uh, reiterate uh, on um, these two things that came in was, uh, you know, when should you uh, submit a cover letter if, for example, you're working through a recruiter and the practice has already been contacted by the recruiter about you? You know, should you just follow up immediately? Should you wait? Is there any, you know, do you have any guidance on that? And then definitely um, in regards to the cover letter, kind of same topic, uh, should you, and I'm, and I know you kind of talked about this too, but should you list where you went to undergrad or relevant experiences in the cover letter itself? Well, and so let's start with question one. When it comes to the recruiter, because I actually did go through some recruiters as well. I tried that whole route when I was looking for jobs. When I first started to talk to a recruiter, I sent them my cover letter and my resume all in one. Even if they didn't ask for my cover letter, I sent it as a package deal. So you're getting my cover letter and you're getting my resume. Just in case when they do reach out to any employers, if the employer wants it, they'll ask for it. If they don't want it and they just want the resume, that's fine. But at least that recruiter will already have those documents on hand that they'll just send it right away. So I always say if you're working with a recruiter, send it as a package deal, both cover letter and your resume. And then to the second question, when we're talking about um, adding, you said the undergraduate information in the cover letter, um, I honestly would not. A cover letter is supposed to be clear, concise, short, and sweet. You don't want to um, get lost in too many things. The only time I would say I would recommend adding your undergrad is if you know the owner of that practice or say the CEO or whoever of that practice, say is a huge Florida State fan and you went to Florida State, I would add that I went to Florida State. It might be some extra brownie points. So don't be afraid to add it if you feel like it's gonna give you some brownie points to help you get that job. But just to say, or just to add, oh, I went to Florida State just because I don't think it's needed because they're gonna see it on your resume anyway. Yeah, for sure. Brownie points are always good, right? We'll take always them when we can get good. them. 
<laughs> um, well, uh, Nishan, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I don't know if you uh, managed to see kind of the live chat, but there's a lot I of love did. for you. That's, I'm like, I don't see it at all. Where do I <laughs> Yeah, see it? it's kind of off to the side, probably hidden too while you're presenting, but a uh, lot of love for you in the live chat, a lot of uh, thank yous and shout outs. So, um, Definitely check it out if you can uh, once we hang up here. But uh, thanks again on behalf of, you know, myself and Covalent Careers and everyone else Thank watching. You guys. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah.